Okay, so now we're going to try to graph this one. This is the one that is on the handout I gave y'all. It says graphing rational functions at the top. And I've already factored it for you. And so we're going to simplify it because if we notice here, this x minus 3 is going to cancel with this x minus 3. And so we will have a hole at that point at x equals 3. If we simplify the equation, we're going to get 1, or oh, I'm sorry, uh, 3 times x minus 1 over negative 1 times x plus 2. So let's go ahead and try to graph this. So we start off by looking to see our asymptotes, looking for our asymptotes. The vertical asymptote we can tell is going to be at negative 2 because remember vertical asymptotes are what makes the denominator equal to 0. 3 also makes the denominator 0 but it's going to be a whole. So the only thing left for vertical asymptote is negative 2. So at negative 2 we will have a vertical asymptote. Then we have to look for our horizontal asymptote. Notice the degree of the numerator is the same as the degree of the denominator. Therefore, it indicates that our horizontal asymptote will be at the leading coefficients, which is 3 divided by negative 1. So that means at negative 3, they will be a horizontal asymptote. The next thing we can look for is our x and our y-intercepts. To find, as I pointed out earlier, to find the x-intercept, we make y equal to 0. So if y is equal to 0, the number that would make our numerator 0 would be 1. So that means at 1, um, when x is equal to 1, we will have A point. We will have a zero. This is where y is equal to zero. The next thing we look for is our y-intercept. That's where it crosses the y-axis. The x-intercept is our zero, which is one. And to find our y-intercept, we set x equal to zero. Well, if we put a zero into each of these, we're going to get three times negative one over negative one times 0 plus 2 is 2, so we're going to get 3 halves. So that means our y-intercept is going to be at 3 halves, and 3 halves is 1 and 1 half. So we know at 1 and 1 half we'll have another point. So this helps us out because we realize that this part of the graph is above the horizontal asymptote. We know it's going to hit the, the vertical asymptote and continue upward here and then it's going to go through those two points and when it hits the horizontal asymptote it's going to drag along that. Our next thing is to figure out well what happens here is the other part of the graph on this side or on this side of the two asymptotes. We do that, we check that by looking for and uh, checking a value that is less than negative 2. For example let's try negative 3. If we stuck negative 3 into our equation, we would, instead of getting this, we can now put negative 3 in here. 3 times negative 3 minus 1, that would be 3 times negative 4, over negative 1, we put a negative 3 in here, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1, we would get um, negative 12 over positive 1, which would be negative 12, indicating that the other part of the graph is down here at negative um, 3, it would be at negative 12, so it would be below the horizontal asymptote, and of course as it hits the vertical asymptote, it will not cross and continue down the way. That's graphing the polynomial rational expressions. I'm going to do another one in class, but if you go through this one slow, I'm sure you can get it, and also follow the guidelines on the handout. It will take practice, but if you practice, 
it will be easy after a little while. Remember, you get your vertical asymptotes first, and that's the value of where the denominator would be zero. And then you get your horizontal asymptote, which is a degree. And then you check different points on either side of the vertical asymptote. Now, how many of you are jumping at the bit saying, but Dr. Emerson, what about that hole that you said we have? We do. We have a hole at positive 3. So out here at positive 3, there's a hole in our graph. And if we needed the exact value for positive 3, we would once again go back to our equation, plug in positive 3 to get our y value. Don't you just love my finger eraser? And we would get positive 3 minus 1 would be 2. And negative 1 times 3 plus 2 would be 5. So at 6 over negative 5 would be our y value. So this point right here would be 3, 1, 2, 3, and negative 1 and 1 fifth which it doesn't line up perfectly, but this isn't graph paper. So, work on the graph paper that I've given you, work on the problems I've given you, and if you have any questions, please ask. I want to be sure everybody understands how to do this. See you in class tomorrow.